Hi, this is Sangeeta Dhavla going to introduce you to the topic coronary heart disease. But before that, we have to understand under which category this disease falls into. So, basically we start off with trying to understand what psychophysiological disorders are. The main objective is to learn about coronary heart disease. But before that, we will also understand what cardiovascular disorders are and cardiovascular disorders basically are psychophysiological disorders. So, our learning process begins from trying to understand what psychophysiological disorders are, then the cardiovascular disorders and finally coming down to coronary heart disease. This term psychophysiological has become very common with the healthcare professionals because they have also found that to a physiological problem there are various psychological factors contributing to. This made them realize that a quite a bit of psychological support when rendered to the patient will see him sail through the disease in a very comfortable manner. They have learned to give importance to the emotional factors as well as the psychological factors that accompany the physiological disorder. It has been found that the psychophysiological disorders do certainly come with a physiological damage to the body and the damage generally involves the heart, the lungs, viscera etc. These patients are found to be depressed or anxious when this physiological condition is existing in their body. The physical symptoms that the disease shows are quite understandable by the practitioner, but there are also these psychological symptoms that tend to affect the condition of the disease. For example, a patient who is suffering from asthma experiences increased bronchiospasms whenever he is under stress. And because of this stress, the kind of wheezing, the kind of coughing and the shortness of breath that he experiences also intensify. So, even though he is an asthma patient, it is the condition of stress that he is subjected to that will bring about more of the symptoms of the condition called asthma. There are different types of psychophysiological disorders and they tend to affect different organ systems. Now, it has been identified that there are nine different organ systems that are affected by these psychophysiological disorders. What are they? They are the skin, the musculoskeletal system, the respiratory system, the cardiovascular system, the hemic and the lymphatic system, the endocrinal system, the gastrointestinal system and the sense organs. A few researchers have said that the coronary artery disease, asthma, hypertension, headaches and ulcer are the five main psychophysiological disorders that majority of the people may fall prey to. But there are a few others also according to some other researchers which also require equal amount of significance and they are eczema and obesity. What are cardiovascular disorders? We understood what psychophysiological disorders are and cardiovascular disorders form a major part of these psychophysiological disorders. There are different types of cardiovascular disorders, but the most common types of disorders that people may fall prey to are the coronary heart disease and hypertension. Let us now try to understand what cardiovascular disorders are. Cardiovascular disorders are a class of disorders which involve the heart, the arteries, the blood vessels or they involve both the heart and the blood vessels. Cardiovascular disease refers to any disease that affects the cardiovascular system. It is mainly the cardiac disease or the vascular diseases of the brain and the kidney and the peripheral arterial disease. Apart from coronary heart disease and hypertension, there are quite a number of other cardiovascular diseases also. There are a few other problems caused also because of the abnormal heartbeats. 
This condition is called arrhythmia. There are a few problems that are caused because of heart defects that are there at the time of birth. This is called the congenital heart disease. There are a few others that might develop after the birth. There are a few problems that are caused because of the thick heart muscle. This condition is called cardiomyopathy. There are a few problems related to the heart that are caused by heart infections. There are a few conditions that are caused because of valvular problems. But our main concern, our main area of interest here lies in coronary heart disease. What is coronary heart disease? This is a condition that occurs when the blood supply to the heart is blocked or it is interrupted because of build up of fatty substances in the coronary arteries. The coronary arteries are the two main blood vessels that supply blood to the heart. If the coronary arteries become narrow because of this fat that has built up in the arteries, the blood supply to the heart becomes slow and restricted and this will cause heart pain or rather chest pain. When the artery gets completely blocked, then it results in a heart attack. Coronary heart disease is one of the major causes of death across the world. In our country, this disease sufferer is a young adult who hails basically from the urban area. Why do you think it is so? It is basically because of his lifestyle, dietary habits and inactivity more or less leading a very sedentary lifestyle that makes him more prone that the young man is more prone to getting this kind of a disease. There are two main forms of coronary heart disease. As we discussed earlier, one is the pain in the heart, one is the myocardial infarcation. In common vocabulary, this condition is referred to as heart attack. The experience of this heart attack is uniquely frightening and can generate a great deal of anxiety. The second one is called the angina pectoris. This is a less serious one but definitely a very painful form of coronary heart disease. In this disease, people experience intense chest pain, especially in the area behind the breastbone and from the shoulder radiates down to the left arm. These symptoms typically are caused by fatty deposits that block the arteries that lead to the heart resulting in a decrease of oxygen supply. Whenever there is physical exertion, this pain tends to increase but when some amount of rest is taken, the condition definitely subsides. What are the symptoms of coronary heart disease? As we have seen earlier, these patients experience pain in their chest. There may be tightness or pressure that is experienced in the chest and this pain is referred to as angina that is triggered by emotional or physical stress. Heart attack is yet another symptom of coronary heart disease. The classic signs of heart attack are the presence of crushing pressure near the chest and it leads down into the shoulder and then into the arm. There may be shortness of breath. There are a few cases where the person considers this shortness of breath as being asthma and tries to take asthalin but will not get down to the root of the problem. When a person experiences shortness of breath, it is always suggested that he goes in for a medical checkup so that they can get down to the root cause of his condition. When there is excessive sweating coupled with shortness of breath, it sure is a symptom of coronary heart disease. Now what are the causes of coronary heart disease? We have looked at the various symptoms of how this kind of disease is reflected. But now we are getting down to the real cause of coronary heart disease. We see that the cause of coronary heart disease is a combination, a combination of the biological factors, of the psychological factors 
and also the socio-cultural factors. First, we will try to understand what kind of a connection exists between personality pattern and coronary heart disease. Researchers have observed that a few individuals are more prone to this kind of a disease and they have categorized this kind of person as a type A individual. These individuals are more prone for the development of coronary heart disease because of the situational challenges they face and because of their personality makeup. It is because of the kind of stress they take that they have more risk to get this coronary heart disease. It has been found that the type A people are more emotional, they are more achievement oriented, they are highly competitive and they work beyond their physiological capacity. Type A behavior personality is described as an action emotion complex. He is very impatient, there is exaggerated competitiveness and there is a chronic sense of urgency in trying to finish a particular task. So, partly this is the personality trait that may be responsible for his picking up the coronary heart disease. Then there is a combination of biological and psychosocial factors that have been identified in the causation of this disease. There are six major areas identified that trigger off the condition. First is the dietary factors. Diets that have been habitually filled with high levels of saturated fats, cholesterols and calories have been found to push a person towards getting the disease easily. Then we have blood chemistry, high levels of cholesterol, the bad cholesterol would also push the person towards higher risks of getting the disease. Then there is the organ disease or dysfunction, disorders like kidney or diabetes make the person more prone to getting a coronary heart disease. Living habits, the deadly trio, smoking, lack of exercise and eating push the person more towards getting the disease. There are a lot of environmental factors like chronic dissatisfaction with his life as well as work. This kind of stress definitely makes him more prone to the disease. There are familial factors, of course the family history. This is one thing which you cannot escape in case of such kind of diseases. So, research was focused on all these behavioral risk factors also for coronary heart disease. Research established the fact that the men smokers stood a greater chance of getting the disease when compared to the non-smokers and women smokers too stood the equal chance of getting the disease when compared to the non-women smokers. Therefore, when the clinician is trying to tackle the problem of coronary heart disease, it becomes imperative that he also focuses on other aspects like the emotional state, the psychological well-being and also his social support system to understand whether the person has some other factors apart from the physiological disorder itself. When all these concerns, when all the concerns and all these faculties are addressed, one can expect an easy recuperation of the person. What are the risk factors for coronary heart disease? Needless to say, more men are prone to getting the disease when compared to men. It is probably because of the habits they fall prey to. Older individuals are more prone to get the coronary heart disease when compared to the younger ones. But at the same time, we just cannot rule out the possibility that even the young ones might get the disease because of their sedentary lifestyles. Family history, of course, you cannot avoid this constraint wherever you go. The presence of coronary heart disease in the family will only increase the chances that a person again might fall prey to the condition. If the father or a sibling in the family suffers from this disease, the likeliness that another person in the family acquires it also are high. High blood cholesterol levels, chronic smoking habits, high blood pressure levels, diabetes, obesity, physical inactivity and high stress levels. These are the risk factors that might push a person into getting coronary heart disease.
what is the kind of treatment given to these patients. Treatment for this condition calls for a strong commitment on the part of the patient to follow a healthy lifestyle and this will take the person a very long way in promoting good health and he will be able to do all his activities like he used to do earlier. If necessary and the cardiologist deems it fit, he can treat the person with some kind of drugs or aggressive treatment also can be meted out to the patient. There are options like stent placement and angioplasty that can be conducted on the patient or a bypass surgery if the situation demands can also be done by the cardiologist. However, one should not forget the psychological aspect that underlies the condition if it is categorized as a psychophysiological disorder. It is not necessary that all the heart patients do have a psychological underlying factor. It is the duty of the cardiologist with the help of a psychologist to ascertain the real cause and then chalk out an individualized treatment plan for every patient. When it has been ascertained that there is a psychological cause, the psychologist comes into the picture and there has to be a perfect relation or a rapport struck between the patient as well as the psychologist. First of all, the psychologist has to gather all the information that he needs to know about coronary heart disease. The patients of late are so informed that it becomes essential for the psychologist also to learn all the information that is related to coronary heart disease. Only then will he be able to answer their queries and guide them properly as to what kind of changes they can be brought in their lifestyles. Each session they meet should be a session that gives them a milestone. A particular problem has been encountered and addressed and a possible solution also has been suggested to the patient. If the relationship between the patient and the psychologist is something that of a passive nature, there definitely is not going to be any interest compound in the relationship and the interest of the patient also might wane eventually which will end up in cutting short this kind of a treatment support that is being given to the patient. While treating the patient, the family context also has to be taken into consideration. What things get into the family context? Basically, it is the relationship that the couple shares with one another that might bring about a positive or negative outcome of the condition. It has been seen that some amount of marital stress will definitely worsen the condition if there is a psychological cause that has been identified in the person's suffering. There is some amount of impact of cardiac disease on the relationship between the couple and the influence of the couple relationship also is there on the progression of the disease. The influence of the couple relationship on psychosocial adaptation is also seen. So, uh, the quality of the relationship that a couple has will take the condition to a positive or a negative direction. If it is favorable, if the spouse is supportive of the other person's condition, that will definitely lead to better management of the condition. Therefore, marital satisfaction, emotional communication and involvement, conflicts and changes in lifestyle and marital roles are usually considered to be reliable indicators of the relationship quality. And when there is poor standards in any of these segments that definitely reflects on the intensity of the disease that is being experienced by the patient. Listening will definitely help in trying to tackle the problem effectively. When the patient comes to the psychologist, all that the psychologist can do is listen compassionately to the patient rather than making it a one-sided affair. Therefore, we see that it is the physical, it is the individual as well as the family components that all act together and result in the condition of the patient.
What is the role of psychologists in treating coronary heart disease? Right from the time of World War II, we have seen the increasing importance of psychologists in trying to deal with problems related to people at large. Their relevance has reached such a stage that physicians consider it fit to consult a psychologist primarily in the management of psychological problems related to medical problems. How can the psychologist help the cardiologist? He can offer in-hospital support, he can offer out-hospital support. At the same time, he can talk to the patient and see to it that he adheres to the treatment regimen. He will try to understand the kind of stress he is facing from the work front and also will try to bring about some kind of lifestyle modification. It is his duty to see to it that the medical therapy optimization is achieved. He will understand the interpersonal stress levels also that the patient is undergoing. And in case of any emotional distress that the patient is facing, it is the duty of the psychologist to get down to the matter, understand and resolve the condition that the patient is facing. Improving the communication levels in the patient also becomes his main duty. The patient should be able to communicate well whether it is with the psychologist or with the cardiologist. If this communication is not proper, the treatment on both the levels, be it at the medical level or at the psychological level, cannot be attained to the fullest. So basically, the psychological intervention or the psychological support that is being offered to the patient has to follow a methodical pattern. The psychologist should be able to help the patient to recognize and express the disease related emotions and he should help him to identify and use strategies in order to control the various risk factors that he may be prone to. He should help the person implement appropriate self-management and rehabilitation techniques. So, to conclude, we see that coronary heart disease is a psychophysiological disorder that can be managed extremely well and the conditions be kept under control with the help of a psychologist as well as a cardiologist. Better lifestyle changes sticking to the dietary regimen as well as the medical regimen will definitely see the person through the disease in a comfortable manner.